it's Regina. Welcome back to my haunted library. Today I'm going to be continuing with Robert McKee's story. So let's get right into it. I found this uh, particular chapter to be extremely uh, beneficial in just reiterating the basic principles of not only writing but art. Aristotle approached the question of story and meaning in this way. Why is it, he asked, when we see a dead body in the street, we have one reaction, but when we read of death in Homer or see it in the theater, we have another. So uh, McKee answers this, uh, because in life, idea and emotion come separately. Mind and passions revolve in different spheres of our humanity, rarely coordinated, usually at odds. Life on its own, without art to shape it, leaves you in confusion and chaos but aesthetic emotion harmonizes what you know with what you feel to give you a heightened awareness and a sureness of your place in reality. In short, a story well told gives you the very thing you cannot get from life, meaningful emotional experience. In life, experiences become meaningful with reflection in time. In art, they are meaningful now, at the instance they happen. I love this idea because it's so true. If, I mean, even if you think back to your own life, it didn't, if you tell a story about, let's say, oh, I had this terrible uh, breakup or whatever, um, the retelling is probably a lot more entertaining than the actual uh, event itself because life has a tendency to, and, and relationships have a tendency to peter out in a, you know, in a whimper more than a bang. But in reflection, we can give it all kinds of bang and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. It's also interesting to read, let's say, somebody's autobiography and seeing their spin on an event in their life could be completely different from the other person involves and, uh, involved and their spin on it. So we take these uh, events and we reshape them maybe to make ourselves feel better, but also to give them a dramatic impact that life just doesn't give us. So I think this is a really excellent point, just, just in, in general. Okay, what else? Scholarly acumen sharpens taste and judgment, but we must never mistake criticism for art. So the premise is the controlling idea. So um, he gives an example of a, a premise. What would happen if a shark swam into a beach resort and devoured a vacationer? So now you've got Jaws. Uh, what would happen if a wife walked out on her husband and child? Kramer versus Kramer. In this section here, he's not only um, challenging the artist, but he's also championing the artist. So uh, here he writes, if to some people a writer's final statements about life appears dogmatic and opinionated, so be it. Bland and pacifying, bland and pacifying writers are a bore. That's true. We want unfettered souls with the courage to take a point of view, artists whose insights startle and excite. So in other words, be fearless with your ideas and don't be afraid to express them. This is uh, very encouraging, I think, as for any writer who's, who's writing fiction. Sometimes you, we uh, censor ourselves or like, oh, you know, that's gonna offend someone, but you know what? Just go with it. You know, you never know what, you, uh, what may offend someone may turn out to be a brilliant insight. So then he uh, concludes that section with, uh, but regardless of genre, the principle is universal. The story's meaning, whether comic or tragic, must be dramatized in an emotionally expressive story climax without the aid of explanatory dialogue. In other words, um, it's, it's always bad writing to be like, oh, and, and this is what you were supposed to get there, just in case you didn't get it and then go and, and do like an epilogue explaining what already should have been in there. So um, be aware if you find yourself doing that. So it talks about the controlling idea or the theme and um, maybe your controlling idea is like good versus evil and your outcome will either be good conquers evil or evil conquers good. Either one is uh, credible if you prove it. He, he writes about Chinatown a lot in this book as like the quintessential uh, great script and I agree it is a great script it's a great movie and uh, the not to give too much away but the ending of that movie 
is very powerful because it sets up this expectation that uh, Jake's going to get the bad guy or he's going to do something to save the day and save Faye Dunaway's character and her daughter. And he actually leads them right into a trap and um, the inadvertently. And the message of that film, when, when the character at the end says, it's Chinatown, it's like corrupt power in this story is more powerful than doing the right thing or getting the, uh, getting the bad guy that sometimes the bad guy wins. And art is dealing with dynamics, whether it's in a painting, in a composition of a painting, or in a piece of music. In writing too, that, that dynamic, that back and forth, that push and pull is what propels that story along. Um, sequence by sequence, often scene by scene, the positive idea and the negative. Counter idea argue, so to speak, back and forth, creating a dramatized dialectical debate. At climax, one of these two voices wins and becomes the story's controlling idea. And then as you have your controlling ideas, are you an idealist? Are you a pessimist? Are you an ironist? Um, being ironic is has been very fashionable in uh, the last, you know, several decades. But um, I think that that gets boring after a while too, you know? And then we get into meaning in society. Uh, once you discover your controlling idea, respect it. Artists threaten authority by exposing lies and inspiring passion for change. So that doesn't come from being preachy. It comes from telling the truth. I believe we have no responsibility to cure social ills or renew faith in humanity, to uplift the spirits of society or even express our inner being. We have only one responsibility, to tell the truth. Therefore, study your story climax and exact from it your controlling idea. But before you take another step, ask yourself one question. Is this the truth? Do I believe in the meaning of my story? If the answer is no, toss it and start again. If yes, do everything possible to get your work into the world. For although an artist may, in his private life, lie to others, even to himself, when he creates, he tells the truth. And a world of lies and liars an honest work of art is always an act of social responsibility. So I will be bringing you chapter seven next week. Anyway, thanks for checking in, and I will see you soon in my haunted library. Bye.